Who are you anyway? What is your real face? In what way is your presence visible at the outside? I'd like to take some time right now to give you a story that was sent to me by a friend in Amsterdam. I believe that it's a kind of a microcosm of tinnitus and an approach to, to coping with what we all are affected by. Um, it's called Talking to Tinnitus, the short story from Amsterdam. As far as I know, it's a true story. And this person has become a friend of mine through an exchange of uh, emails and uh, we've never actually met in person. But as I've said earlier, we need each other and we're all responsible for each other. And I'm not saying kind of tried to say that, but uh, heart to heart, we all know that. Again, talking to tinnitus. Our path through the world of tinnitus continues with a camping trip in Europe. What is it like to live with constant tinnitus? Or as this friend calls it, tinnitus. Dear tinnitus, or dear tinnitus, dear tinnitus, The camper makes a lot of noise during driving, and the hard cushions are not really comfortable to sleep on. Maybe that's the reason that after one week holiday, you still let me hear your heavy protest? It's been so many times now that you woke me up in the middle of the night with your irritating buzzing and whistling, and my desperation tries to find a way out. I hit my left temple several times with my fist. In a few moments later, a comforting hand caresses my head. Tears are filling my eyes. I decided to write you a letter as soon as we come home from holiday. Perhaps that will be good for our disturbed relationship. I'm listening somewhere to a chauffeur. Um, it's not the same with tinnitus. Anyway, going on. Fortunately, there are many good moments during a holiday as well. And feeling somewhat milder, I can contemplate with somewhat milder feelings about what I want to write to you about my life, which after your arrival took a turn for the worse. Although you're not on speaking terms right now, I will try to start an open communication with you. With that, I mean talking to each other without the intention to change one another. For years now, you have lived in rooms, but until about a half a year ago, you were an exceptionally tranquil inhabitant. Only if it was very silent did you give a sign of life? And I hardly felt uncomfortable with you. But after a serious cold, suddenly the peace and quiet were disturbed and you changed into a noisy and sneaky housemate. For reasons that are not clear to me at all, you find it necessary to let me know that you are around 24 hours a day. You're here at daytime and you're here especially at night. You're here if I try to fall asleep. You're here when I'm awake thinking what tomorrow will bring. And you're here when in the early morning I wake up still tired. Then I listen to your high-pitched buzz, trying to estimate what kind of day it will be. 
Are you at the foreground or in the background? Will you trigger irritation and self-pity or will I let go and enjoy? Even though what I have is accompanied by your attentive, attentive whistling, never will you be allowed to be postponed until a point in time that suits me better. You have all the time in the world. You withdraw when I think I am mastering you. But you resurface mercilessly when I'm vulnerable. Sometimes I overflow with despondent anger, vicious intruder, I did not deserve this. Sometimes I speak reassuring words. I have heard you, beloved ear, relax, nothing to worry about. But while you continue to buzz evenly, you take note of everything. You are listening with interest when I try to explain to my beloved or my son what it is like to live together with a person like you. My 13-year-old son puts his ear against mine and I have a foolish desire that he can hear you. But you don't show yourself. I cannot properly introduce you to anyone. I hardly know you myself. Sometimes that is the most difficult part that it is almost impossible to explain to people in my environment who you really are. In fact, most people have no clue whatsoever. I am under the impression that I hear your sneaky laughter when I bother someone with your existence. And again, I am so determined to tell nobody about you unless I am asked to do so. Who are you anyway? What is your real face? In what way is your presence visible at the outside? I hope that by writing this letter, I will get to know you better. That would be a great help to reframe your, to reframe your sound by reconnecting you with different, less emotionally charged images or reassuring attributes. Your arrival was not my wish, and to accept your presence is difficult, awfully difficult. It is frustrating that I cannot give you notice to leave or to turn you out into the street. Moreover, like a parasite, you eat what is frequently, what is frequently causes my energy supply to be exhausted. Little by little, I discover that you are crazy about attention. By all possible means, you try to draw all attention. And this letter is a mere example of that. In a sense, you behave like a spoiled child because you have never enough. In that respect, you have chosen a good home with my tendency to perfectionism, the willingness to throw myself into something combined with an urgent need for information. Sometimes I wonder whether your whistling is just a harassment or that you try to warn me for something. I have discovered that when I am relaxed and have had a good night's sleep, you will withdraw most of the time. You continue to ring and to buzz, but at least you close the door. In that sense, you are a built-in stress gauge, and you urge me to search for relaxation as much as possible. And that's vital, because under your influence, I have even developed a cardiac arrhythmia. As you probably have noticed, music plays an important role in my life. I must confess that music is almost as important to me as eating and drinking. Because you seem to have a preference for living in ears, it might interest you that my capacity to intensely enjoy certain music has something to do with that third ear. 
but I will not even try to explain to you where that third ear is located. Most of the time I cannot turn the music enough to mask your sound, so usually you sing along in a corner. Your monotonous tune forms just a part of the sound, but the perfectionist in me tries to find something that should not be there and tries to isolate your tuneless song. Sometimes I get so tired of myself. I used to think that silence is predominantly determined by the absence of an external sound source. Now with you around, I know that silence is actually something different, that it goes deeper. Silence has also to do with acceptance, dropping resistance, to acknowledge that life unfolds in an unforeseen way. In that sense, silence is more than just the stopping of the merry-go-round of thoughts. Where there is resistance, there cannot be silence. And that is exactly your web. By giving you so much attention, you arouse my resistance, which in turn will direct my attention to you. And that closes the circle. <clears throat> Nevertheless, I have known moments, however scarce, that I hear you indeed, but that there is also silence. And this is a new experience for me.